podcast we're not we're people recording a podcast the podcast format allison brings a topic uh that chris and i are supposed to talk about but more often than not we don't know anything about the topic so we bullshit our way through it um it's pretty much every business meeting you've ever been to in podcast form <clears throat> we like it maybe you will too uh you can find us on the internet just google binary jazz Google will figure out like where you want to see us, our site, YouTube, Twitter, which one you frequent. You can figure it out. That's it. That's it. We're starting. Let's go. Pretty good, uh, Let's SEO. Let's rock and roll. good SEO for binary jazz, actually. Yeah, SEO for the uninitiated is um, except, except sublimated. There, what? Except there's a book uh, on Amazon. No, not a book. It's a, an album. Uh, on Amazon Music by Scott Shaw called Binary Jazz. And he has, so on the front page of Google, uh, we have all of the results. No, none of the video suggestions. Uh, all of the results on the page except for Binary Jazz by Scott Shaw on Amazon Music. But that is followed by Binary Jazz. Oh, no, by Binary Jazz by Aubrey on Amazon Music, which is also not us. Uh, but you have everything else. Wait, what's Amazon? I'm not familiar with this. You know, no, you don't know Amazon. Yeah, not a, fam- not a, yeah, that's not a primer. That's a lie. Yeah, that's that's too bad. Um, that's a lie. Um, hey, I, uh, I'm realizing as we roll into this episode uh, that uh, I'm pretty fired up today, which is uh, a different take on things. So I hope you all are buckled in. How many cups of coffee have you had? I've just had two, okay. just two. Uh, I woke up early because my mind was doing stuff. So about five o'clock-ish, I was like, well, it's time to get up. So not that like an hour more, that doesn't make sense. Why would that make me a bit more hyper here? Maybe, maybe there's a glint of optimism out that window. Oh, I hope so. There's no optimism out my window. <laughs> I, 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 it's not related to the new, the new job. Yeah, <laughs> that Friday optimism. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's a Friday and I'm not dreading Monday. That's not true. I didn't dread Monday at my last job. Um, I, but it's new, I, uh, like newness is nice. Novelty actually. is cool. Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe it's just that simple. Like novelty in my life. Things are different and I think that's nice during quarantine times yeah i so the kids were excited about my new job on monday and so i uh the kids oh. were excited about you working for a beer thing <laughs> they they don't they don't know i mean they're 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 excited they're taking you're that excited. From, right they're excited well number one because it's change right so that's probably part of it but but also they were like you know like i told them yeah it's a it's a step in a different direction like it's it's uh it's actually like a reduction in title cool whatever you know like but I'm, I feel like I'm going to be doing stuff that I enjoy more. And they were like, that's yeah, awesome. Um, and uh, so they like Monday, they're like, good luck at your, your new job. And I came and sat down on my computer and powered it on at the same time and opened the same software, Slack, Gmail, PHP Storm. Uh, and I'm like, for a brief moment, I pondered the time we live in that I can have a new job and do exactly the same thing that I did on every <laughs> Monday at my previous job. <laughs> like there are new people now it's a different slack <laughs> it is a different slack yes yes and a quieter slack just the nature of the people uh not yeah, the people are quiet their traditions their emoji responses yeah the okay. emoji the emoji uh um uh ad- not adoption but the 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 sort of initial culture not, it's not exactly culture shock either what am i thinking um dialect when, yeah emoji dialect emoji. thank you thank you moving from one slack to another slack 
and learning the new emoji dialect is very, very interesting and very difficult. Um, like you have you have certain expectations going into it, and then like they're all dashed. I have been renowned for my uh, emoji utilization throughout through the previous Slack of spheres I've been in. Um, so, so you obviously uh, uploaded the Charmander dancing. Yeah. That was like, the first thing yeah, you did absolutely. on day, a day one, you log into Slack and you're like, what? No Charmander dancing. <laughs> uh, day T minus 14. Cause I joined the Slack two weeks before I started there, uh, to do some like, you know, pre-employment stuff. Um, so yeah, Charmander was probably actually maybe like T minus eight days. I had a Charmander dancing. Um, yeah. Yeah, because how would I react to things without Charmander dancing? Um, but also, there's it wasn't like a thanks emoji, so now there's two. Um, one of my favorites is the little oh no text bubble. I need to add to our Slack. But I often find when I break things that that's a great emoji to lean into because it makes it a little, <laughs> it makes me feel a little less like, oh, shit. <laughs> And it took till Thursday before I broke something and it wasn't even in prod. So, I mean, I, I'm kind of killing it, not bragging, but, uh, and I've pushed did a prod. You, I mean, did you work twice. out that thing? Did you work out that four day a week thing? Is that what you're doing? Like, no, are you no, no, they didn't want to do that. Uh, which is fair because they were like, we're a little concerned you're going to get used to that. And then when we want to ramp up, you're going to be like, no, thanks. And that is not going to be ideal for us. Like, Thanks. Yeah. Well, they're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of why I'm asking for it. It'd be pretty badass to work a four day a week job for the rest of my life. Like you wouldn't have to worry about retaining me. <laughs> like, <laughs> not that that's a concern. I feel like I have to maybe couch my language a little on the off chance that like my manager's like, oh, maybe I should listen to this podcast he's on and this would be the episode. <laughs> that would be horrifying. Uh, not really. Um, but I don't want to say something stupid. So oh, what the hell listening, If you're listening, hi to, to, uh, yeah. to, to Gary's <clears throat> new uh, First, employers. unlikely. Secondly. Um, Not that unlikely. I mean, I, it's, it's somewhat unlikely that people that we work with uh, would listen to uh, the podcast that we do. But it's more likely that people that we work with would listen to the podcast that we do than anyone else would listen to it. Yeah, and I guess numbers? like I thought for a minute that my parents were going to start listening and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then I think they just kind of gave up the whole podcast idea. So yeah, they were going to learn how for the driving back from California to Colorado. Now they're just like not driving, obviously. Um, so I'm just like, that's like shelved. <laughs> the long car ride is shelved. <laughs> You're like, have you heard Radio Lab? Me. Yeah. Let me set you up. Well, I just, I feel um, like there's so many podcasts that are like right up my parents' alley of like weird. Oh, niche. were we going to be like the introduction to podcasting with, with your, for your parents? Yeah. Like start, trial <laughs> it out, <laughs> trial it out on this completely meaningless podcast that talks about nothing. And then once you've gotten used to the idea of podcasts, you can find something that actually is interesting. It has a narrative yeah. flow. Yeah, about jumping in the deep end. Like you can't like just you throw someone into the world of Ira Glass. You have to like ease in. <laughs> that's, that's probably legit. That's probably legit. Also, I mean, if you want to dip your toe in the water, you can't just go to podcasts that have no advertising, right? You have to sort of like slowly <laughs> wean yourself off of commercials. So mm, true. like anything from Gimlet would be okay. So you can hear the same advertisement 130 times. I'm thinking Then about you can get into more. <laughs> What's that? But I'm thinking about using Squarespace. Oh, oh God. <laughs> MailChimp. What? <laughs> um, well, that will prevent me from making this entire episode a digital ocean uh, advertisement. <laughs> what else should what else should we say is awesome while we're here? What's your what's your new what are you using? Deploy HQ? Deploy HQ, yeah. Deploy HQ is fantastic, as is buddy.works. What are some other lesser known things that we should give a shout out to that make our lives better? Slack, uh, congratulations on the purchase by Salesforce. Don't start sucking. Salesforce bought Slack. I didn't see that. That's yeah, like twenty-eight billion dollars. Jesus. I saw that number. I'm like, wow, that's a really crazy 
gross exaggeration. No, it's not. It was like 27.7 and, or maybe 12.2. I don't know. It kind of blows my mind. Um, like that's a, an enormous number for Slack, I feel. And, and Salesforce is not an organization I particularly care for. I know a lot of, I, I've met people who work for Salesforce in one capacity or another. And they seem yeah, like, of course you oh, have, because they employ like they a seem third like, of the okay, tech human beings. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And yet they can't yeah. describe what they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, the person that I, the person, I actually, I think that was the, that might've been the talk that I went to that was talking about um, outcome driven development planning. And he was a project owner. Aren't we all? Oh. <laughs> um, I take that back. I can't, I can't dog on people at Salesforce because I don't know very many. However, my experience with the platform has been like, oh, you have lots of platforms and very poor API docs. Also, lack of flexibility. The people might be wonderful. The technical side leaves me sad. But it's not for us. It's not for me. It's not I know. For they're not extracting cash from me. So I guess yeah. what does it matter? Like, it's not, it's not for us. I don't it matter to them. It doesn't need to be good for us. It needs to be good for the people that use it. And I'm not delivering shareholder value. Therefore, I am not worth the effort to them. Uh, I discovered a tool. I, I'm a little bit late to this boat, uh, but I discovered a tool that I'm, I'm, I've been playing with a little bit uh, called Notion. Mm. Hmm. Well, uh, no idea what that is. <laughs> it is... Do you like it? Hard to describe. It's like, it's sort of like, it's a note taking app of sorts, but the cool thing about Notion is you can uh, sort of link, link things, like link different things together. Um, and you can create these like documents that are like, like, so, so the, um, like, I think like a lot of people use it for like uh, sprint forwards and, and whatever, like worky stuff. And so, but that's not how I wanted to use it. Um, I learned ab about it first in the capacity of writing uh, a D and D adventure because um, some people were using that to sort of to keep track of all their characters and like their narrative and all the settings and you can link it all back and forth. Um, and I was like, that sounds like a lot of work, and I'm not going to do that for this for this front. I'm just going to use what I know, which is Google Docs. Um, but then I also then I started thinking about like, okay, well, if you could do it for that, could you do it for like an ongoing campaign? Um, and I found. So you can create templates based on the stuff that you use. Um, you can use other people's templates. And there's a D and D uh, podcast called The Adventure Zone, which is a big deal. And The Adventure Zone apparently they have a Notion template, and I don't know if this is what they use, um, but I used their template. Um, and so it has like you can create databases, right? You can create these databases in like a note taking uh, app, and essentially a database is just like. Uh, uh, a, a, a spreadsheet um, but like each yeah. item in the spreadsheet can be its own thing its own like document right so you can fill your spreadsheet with like your characters you can fill your spreadsheet with like npcs you can with all the details about them you can give each thing categories and tags and never all those things cross link to each other so you can have like this whole collection of stuff that's all like mm. you know hyper tagged and meta linked and you know hypertext transfer protocol. Wow. I've only used it in a work capacity, but like right now I'm working on a really lovely site that's also bilingual though. And it's been really helpful for that because we can like, we can use it to link to English, the French and like keep things like sitemap wise. I, I can just keep everything organized because there's also courses and lessons and I'm just, everything has to be in both. And so it's really helped me get a handle on what actually is connected to where in the grand scheme of things, especially because I don't speak French that well. Um, so I'm like, especially my written French, I'm like, oh, that's how you spell that word. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, so I've been, I've been kind of trying to use that. Uh, I have, I, I, I moved all of my stuff. Part of it was like, um, part of this was inspired by the fact that I have I had a really long document in Google Docs of all of the all of the side characters in uh, the campaign that I'm running with the family, and I have a really hard time keeping track of them all. Um, but in particular, I have a really hard time keeping track of what accent I used last for that character <laughs> and, and sure. where that character was found. 
like what this character is the shop owner of such and such and that such and such is in this district right and this yeah. is the accent that i use for them and i wanted a way to like have like a really just a quick view where i could see that information like at a glance when i needed it and not have to like scroll through this really long document with all with everything and go through everybody um or have this like weird bartender show up in a village where you're like that doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> yes so for that it's been really good um although i haven't used it for that yet but i've started like i i, I started putting in like session notes um uh yesterday before the thing i need to put the session notes from last night in um just because i i realized too that like if uh, frequently if i don't if i don't know where we left off and like if i'm running out of a book uh like an adventure of a pre-published adventure i can usually like keep track well this is where we left off so that's where we're going to pick up um but if i if i'm not or for ad-libbing or if there's just stuff in between or if we kind of went off book for a while um I don't necessarily remember what we were doing last, um, and and that's kind of important. Yeah. <laughs> um, so so taking notes and and taking notes of like things that people picked up and like because not everybody is gonna like remember that stuff. Um, it's it's helpful. So for that sort of stuff, it's it's been yeah, it's interesting. What technology do you use during D and D? Then do you have a laptop open? I have a laptop open. I have uh, lots and lots of dice. I have stacks of books. Um, yeah. The laptop I use for music and then uh, ambient sound. I use a program called Sirenscape, which does like just background ambient noise. Um, and they have a bunch of like free packs that you can download um, that are like, you know, this is the, uh, this is like a weird, uh, a weird witchy shop. This is like underground dungeon crawling yeah. noises. Um, they, and they also have music, but I use my own music because I've been, you know, curating these playlists for freaking ever. Um, so I do that. And then I also, um, uh, I also use it for reference, mostly for stat blocks. Um, so when they're encountering a, a creature, I usually have a stat block up in a tab, uh, in Firefox because it's easier to look up the stat block on the internet than to flip through the pages of the book. Usually, um, what those, what that doesn't give me is like, if there's any other information about the creature then mm -hmm. the book is going to tell me more about that thing. So like last night I had a bunch of stat blocks up and I had a page open in front of me about, you know, the gold dragon that they might meet. Um, and it has all the information and the layer actions and stuff that wouldn't, wouldn't have been just in the stat block. Um, and I also use my laptop for um, like looking up spells because again, like flipping through pages takes longer than like doing a Google search and finding the spell and the, and, and the reference there. Um, so I usually, yeah, I usually have a laptop handling like that stuff. And then I have, um, yeah, stacks and stacks of books, <laughs> so many books. Most, most books and mostly like stacks of books that I never open either. Like they just sure. sit back there, <laughs> behind me. They're there if I need them. Um, and, and yeah, most of it is there's not, um, there's not a lot of, it's, it's mostly lo-fi, um, like actual things, but, um, I, I have been playing with the idea, um, and maybe, maybe when we um when we can do D, D in a group with people again um i've been playing with the idea of using um roll 20 and like screen sharing um or like extending my my laptop uh display to the tv that would basically be right behind uh the table that we play on um to show like you know this is a visual representation of of what they're looking at so there's like you know so you can see it better or so you can see things or because I so I can use digital maps instead of like, you know, if I don't have yeah. um, yeah. I I've, and because that sort of stuff. Um, uh, Rule 20 in particular does like lighting effects and like area like like your 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 vision area. So like if you enter a room, it shows you what you can see, um, whereas it's really hard to like replicate that like with actual miniatures. Um, yeah, my, my miniature collection is is uh i have to ad lib a lot <laughs> we'll say like oh yeah these these rat things from the mice and mystics game they're gonna be our bugbears today again this is what happens ladies and gentlemen when uh we record on the day after i run D and D. Half yeah gas is D, D. sorry i love it because gary's like totally amped you're amped about D. &D. 
I'm just like in Friday mode. <laughs> what's uh what's your like normal Friday routine like after you close out the week? After you all do? close out the week. Like like when you're like, I'm done working for the week. Like what's right. the thing that happens? What's your well, lately, Fridays mean that we have a ginger, fancy ginger ale. <laughs> no, that's rad. Yeah. That's like the kind that, of answer like, I was looking for. It's like fever tree ginger ale. So it's like super fancy and like real ginger and delicious. Ooh, um, that's got some kick. That combined with some very classy all dressed chips. All dressed chips. Yeah. What is it's, that? They're like, like, like lots of stuff on them. That's today's topic. It's the everything bagel of chips. It's the everything bagel of chips. Yeah, it's kind of like a combination between barbecue and ketchup. I guess, I mean, they're, I think you have them now in the States in certain places, but um, they're good. <laughs> it's like you can commit to a bag of all dressed chips, but I can't commit to a whole bag of ketchup chips. That's just like a lot for me. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Friday nights, uh, Friday nights are movie nights. So, um, Solid. we rotate, uh, through the family, uh, who gets to pick a movie for Friday night. And usually we don't finish it on Friday night. Usually it's sort of like we watch part of it and then it, it goes over through the weekend. Um, and, and to keep it easier to remember, we're kind of going in, uh, descending order in order of age. So like it's me and then Aaron and then Gavin and then Lila. And then after Lila is me again. Um, just because it's easier to remember that way because um, we didn't have a specific order before and I thought we well, should we put this on the calendar but that seems really weird we should we remember who who we did last week um, so that makes it somewhat easier to do that yeah um, yeah that's that's our that's our Friday our Friday night thing um, we've been trying to do like more I want to say rituals uh, in mm -hmm. that way to uh, through throughout the pandemic because just to keep a, a sense of normalcy and like um and and like fun things like not like rituals like i have to do this thing like like you know like thursday is D D and friday is is movie night and yeah, yeah. aaron and i used to do rom-com mondays uh where on monday night we used to watch, watch a romantic comedy um uh -huh. we haven't we haven't yeah. been doing that lately we probably should get back into that um, but we're getting into love actually season anyway so ritual is the right word though like that I, that's that's actually i guess what i wanted to ask was what, what's your friday ritual do you know what the movie is for tonight yet uh no it will be it will be aaron's pick uh there's a new movie uh that's done by the the people that did uh, song of the sea and what's the other one uh uh, Secret of the Kells, which is a really, it's a really cool animation studio um, that is, that's been, that does like a lot of things that are sort of based on like um, Irish and Gaelic and, and like, you know, English uh, mythologies, um, which those, are, both of those are. Um, and uh, they do, they have a new movie that's on Apple TV plus, uh, which we've been wanting to watch anyway. I, I think that we might just watch that, but not do that as our Friday night movie, but it's Aaron's pick, so I don't know what the movie's going to be yet. Hmm. Last week we watched, what did we watch? What did I make us watch? <laughs> usually, usually when I pick something, it's, it's not painful. Do you think oh, your choices are more esoteric? Idiocracy is what we watched last week. <laughs> A pick me up. Yeah. It's like last night we watched, nice. watched yeah. Golden exactly. of Men, and I was exactly. like, "Why? Are, what are we doing?" <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I wanted to I wanted to to watch. I like I was in the mood for like Office Space, um, mm -hmm. but I felt like watching Office Space with the kids like they wouldn't get the office part of it, which is like half of the joke. Um, so so we settled we settled on Idiocracy. Did uh, yeah. Have you all been, do you all uh, keep up with the seasons of Fargo on, I don't even know. What I haven't, I haven't, yeah. I, I've, I've seen the last them. season, um, I found really crushing. Uh, I mean, it's not like a pleasant show anyway, obviously, <laughs> but uh, Chris Rock is in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that. Which, uh, 
I, I mean, just, yeah, it was, it was really, it was my fate, my, my no favorites, the wrong word. <laughs> it was the season I most appreciated by far because it was, um, it was deep. It was, it was like the social subtext was really, really got me, really got me. So hats off. I'm wearing a hat because I need a haircut and I have this weird thing where I put the headphones on and get like the horizontal mohawk going on right now. <laughs> And instead of buzzing my hair, I'm just wearing a hat all week. I mean, I take it off when I'm not on calls. I don't wear it to bed or anything weird like that. <laughs> Good clarification. I'm glad I put that out there in case anybody was wondering. Do we, Did have, we do get we to a, the topic for this I was week? Say, do, we, do we have a topic for the next four minutes until we get the answer to the, what the topic is? <laughs> um, I think you might know this, but that's OK. I'm bringing it to the table anyway. Um, Lazarado. Lazaretto. Lazaretto. Oh, that's the name for the Toyota pickup truck when it's uh, rebranded and sold in um, like South America. <laughs> you so fast. Can you spell it for me? L A Z A R E T T O. It's like, joking aside. Like it sounds. It's, La- it's a music Lazaretto. term, but I don't know what it means. Uh, I would believe that. I would believe that. That it's you a music term. Pickup thing, that yeah. it's a pickup truck thing too. Term well, I, 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 I would believe both that it's a music term and that Gary doesn't remember what it is. Oh, but not the pickup truck? Come on. <laughs> I mean, the pickup truck, it could be that too, honestly. Like, like, yeah. you know, like a, like a Forza. A Ford Forza. Is that a thing? Sounds like a thing, doesn't it? It does. My son plays uh, Forza games on the Xbox, and I'm I don't know what a Forza is. Like, Forza, it's a racing game, but is like Forza for, the word for race and no, no. For, Forza Forza is Italian, Forza, uh-huh. and it means uh, onward, <laughs> like forward. That. Okay. So so like if you're so if a Ford Forza could be a thing. If exactly, exactly. So if you're yeah. if you're if you're at if you're at a uh, an Italian football match, uh, and you're oh, in the, and you're you're cheering the Roman team, you'd say Forza Roma. So glad I buckled up for this one. Woo! I was waiting for that, Chris. <laughs> Chris is Italian. Now, now, were you waiting for the Italian accent, or were you waiting for the the hand sing- signal? Do they are they not? I thought you could no, do the accent can't. without a hand. You can't, yeah, you, you can't, yeah, I thought it was physically, you can't do you it can't without do the hand. <laughs> yeah, I saw yes Roma. is the answer. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of tomato. The Ford's a robot tomato? <laughs> yeah, why not? Oh, I think I'm out of tomatoes. Or, and... or if you're throwing tomatoes at someone, you can say Ford's aroma. That's intimidating it's a different it's a different uh inflection but that's not what Laza- that's not lazaretto sure every day this week <laughs> i think every day this week lazaretto i'm not sure it's been every day this week but i'm out of tomatoes now and i'm a little sad about it for saroma it's a highlight of my sandwiches honestly the tomato <laughs> this week that has been yeah that's not like diminishing the value of the rest of the sandwich but the tomato, like every bite I have with a good tomato in there, I was like, hmm, really happy with this tomato. Do you activate the tomato with salt and pepper? Ooh, activate. I, uh, I, I didn't know it was called that. Yeah, I didn't know it was called that. Um, I have. I've used um, pepper by itself. I've used like a, you know, like the generic like Greek seasoning, like that. I've used some other stuff uh, from, oh, penziespices.com. That might be their website, might not be, but Google it, Penzies. So Stop probably some Penzies mixes. <laughs> I know. I know. I wish they knew about it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Like every day it's been a little different spice variety. Uh, never just salt and never salt and pepper. Pepper by itself once. And then all sorts of other spice mixes. Now I want a tomato even more. Maybe I'm just going to have to go find a tomato today before lunch. Ground pepper? Like do you actually have a pepper grinder? Or do you use just normal like pre-, pre We do have a pepper grinder. We have, uh, but it's one of those like where it's like built in, which is yeah. fine, but, you know. Um, and we had one, like a salt grinder that way as well. But I think Florida humidity may have made it useless. That doesn't sound good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
in Florida. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what happened. I think it was like you turned it over and you shook it, but like nothing the comes out. Yeah, rock pellets yeah. were just like stuck in the yeah. Yeah, they're gl they glued, adhered to the inside. Activated tomatoes is um, the name of my new today's topic. topic. Last but, <laughs> yeah. So, do we get to know what it means now, or do we have to wait? Uh, I, I, I don't. Well, I, I don't know that I more? said what I think it is, but I don't know that I have a thing. Uh, I don't know. I'll go with I'll go with Gary that it's it's some music thing. I don't know. Okay. Well, let's figure out what kind of music thing it is. We got we have some time. So, okay. Lazaretto and music is yeah. We don't have. It has nothing to do with so. volume. It. Not I think it's probably a musical term that means like with bounce. Okay. What's an example of a song? A song that uses Lazaretto. Lazaretto. Uh, uh, so Tub Thumpin' by Chumbawamba. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that song, that, that song's <laughs> Lazaretto really good. <laughs> Somebody once told me that. <laughs> That was not on my Spotify annual playlist, just for what it's worth. But not for 2020, or, or, 2020 or, that's a whole new slate. Yeah. I know, I gotta get started now. I Have you I all been so making, silly. have you all been working on your, your binary jazz playlist? Cause I have. I started it this morning. I've, I've I, just started dumping things into a playlist and I will go through them later. Just to be yeah. clear, one playlist. Yeah, I know. And then we yeah. How I can't make two playlists that are specific to each of you. It's too. Well, yeah. yeah. How no. long should the playlist be? I'm so. I, that I is that is the magic of making a playlist is deciding how long it should be. What the perfect length perfect length is. This this is hysterical because this like I generally just like eh, whatever like I don't care what people think about me. I find this crazy intimidating. I'm so nervous about this. Y'all. Is it because it's us or would you be like? Yes. Oh people? yes. Yes, absolutely. We're, you think we music. have like really weird music taste? Or like we're well, just gonna no, have because really I don't want to put something taste. in there and that, and someone be like, wait, like, more you, Mozart? What, Jeez, Gary. Or no, what are you saying with this song? You know, right? Like Mambo Number no. Five. <laughs> what? I, I, I don't know. Like I mean, like seriously. Apparently, I've time traveled. Why don't you like, just uh, reorder your 2020 in a way that you think is more palatable, and then use that. <clears throat> I was thinking I was going to go like with a very narrow set of parameters, like, like perhaps all Beatles, right? Hmm. And then it's all about order and length apparently too, because shit, that's a thing. So <laughs> your playlist could be like three songs. It's up to you. <laughs> it's more like no a rules except those that you impose on yourself, but the yeah. rules that you impose on yourself will say something about who you are as a person. I know, That's I know, and follow me to my grave. Binary jazz is all about no rules. Yeah. Except you um, <laughs> Speaking no of rules falling to a grave, rules. did you all see Starship's launch uh, two days ago? No. Starship is the, uh, the family of ships that eventually will be returning humans to the moon and potentially to Mars. And it's, a, it's the next rift that SpaceX is doing past the current Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy class of rocket. And so this was their first atmospheric test flight and the, uh, it went to 15 kilometers or 40,000 feet or something like that, uh, and, uh, ish. Uh, and it was set up to test the atmospheric descent because this rocket will go up and it will, as it comes in the atmosphere, it will basically belly flop and it has fins in the front and the back. So it falls like a skydiver. And then mm -hmm. before it lands, it will kick its butt over and land like a Falcon 9. So engines down basically like every rocket we ever saw in movies as kids, like, mm. like the sci-fi, like, oh, it takes off and then it goes and then it comes in and just lands. Like that's, that's what this does. Um, and did it do it and, or did it, did it like fail? Yes and yes, it did it and exploded. So it was like, it was everything you could hope for. Um, it honestly, like when it transitioned from upright flight to belly flopping, I, uh, I teared up and got chills because it was so amazing. I mean, it was just like to see it, to see this realized, because they've been, I mean, they've been talking about this annually for several years, this idea. So to see it, and I can't imagine what it must be like to be an engineer there, um, having worked on this thing. And so it went like that and it plummeted back towards where it was going and guided and you could see the fins and controlling. 
and then it uh, it pitched over to land um, and, and uh, landed with too much force and exploded. Um, but <clears throat> but the landing, I mean, like that's you know, like the, the the purpose of this flight was to test like the the flight dynamics and to understand like, I mean, this was like testing. Like this was like, can we actually do it? And and like to, I, I have two thoughts. One is how horrifying must it be traveling to Mars for nine months? And then you start to feel gravity again. And then all of a sudden you kick over and land. I'm like, that's going to be a scary as hell ride. Um, and number two, like- The just, new just ride see, at Disneyland, travel to, to Mars. To see it like realized, uh, like it, it, hasn't, it hasn't left the atmosphere. It hasn't orbited. It's, it, it has a long way to go. But that proof of concept was- uh, well, the other I stuff know. we know we can do, like the other stuff seems like it's like, that's like the easy part, like going up and keep going up. We've been doing that for like 50 years. Like we know how to go up. That's not a problem. Yeah, but that's, but that's hard. Like, especially with, with bags of meat that require yeah. like a certain amount of like gases and fluids and ways to get rid of bad gases and fluid. Like we're not the best payloads. Yeah. Uh, no, we sort sure. of suck as payloads. Yeah, you know, like the whole like eating, processing food, breathing. Like, I mean, it would be better to send robots with like iPads on their faces, and then we could all just travel to Mars digitally. <laughs> oh man! And so we're and so twenty twenty one from our from our bunker underground us. after the nuclear uh, fallout. A a, a, a a a rover potentially landing on Mars too, which. Boy, I, I realize that part of my love of space is uh, is total escapism. So there's that. Anyway, Lazaretto. Uh, Lazaretto is a Lazaretto. Uh huh. Uh, is a maneuver in fencing. Uh, it's it's when Ooh. you know Damn, I bet you're you, right. you know in uh, the Princess Bride where. Um, uh, Inigo Montoya is fighting the six fingered man. He does that thing where he sort of like, zzz, zzz, boop, boop, like that thing. That's a Lazaretto. It's when you spin your, your, your saber around and kind of like confuse the other person, wrap the other person's saber in the middle of it, and then you can do some stupid little move after it. That's a Lazaretto. Okay, now, okay. We, now we can find out what it actually is. <laughs> Uh, Lazaretto is, well, it's a Jack White album, so musically kind of close, um, but okay. also the word itself is a house or building specifically set apart for quarantine or the diseased and sick. Oh, so topical. Topical. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> um, it stems from many things, but people think that it stems from Lazarus. Where yeah, um, yeah, okay. we could, I could have man full of source it. dies and then he gets brought back. Um, yeah. I almost said something about Lazarus actually, because I thought there was maybe something there, but I was I was you like, were thrown reaching by for, the Italian. <laughs> I was actually reaching for a music relationship, which was there, but not in that. But I mean all way. those I was are trying to think about how music are, all those music references are, are Latin, like the the Force, forte, and like all that stuff is. Like yeah, that. I guess I guess that would be like the equivalent of like a very dramatic like break and silence. I was actually thinking that it Before might be like a in. really dramatic break. Yeah, I was actually thinking, but then yeah. You're like, but I went with fencing. Yeah, because I, yeah. I mean, you you already did the music thing. But that was my first when you said it was a music thing. That was my first thought was that it would be like a break, but I knew that it wasn't. So, yeah, <laughs> that's just a rest. <laughs> just a rest that that the the conductor makes more dramatic somehow why is silence so if i mean I, this is a dumb question why is silence so effective? i'm gonna ask it anyway why is silence you're gonna so ask effective? it and then we're gonna go we're gonna cut to silence because we're gonna get cut off in the middle of your question so go ahead and ask your question yeah why is silence so effective in the context of like a big dramatic piece of music like you know what i'm saying like you you get in and there's the big build 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 Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. 
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.